everyone. So now we're moving over to carrying on doing some. I'm going over some more of your comments for um, Empire of Normality. So another one of you says, and these are good comments for part 14. Another one of you says, I tell people that switching activities is a very difficult thing for me. My emotions are very strong. I hate certain textures and the brightness of the sun. How would society help with that? Yeah, that's, the, that's another thing. He's a um, neurodiversity movement. Oh, it's all society kind of neglect his sensory issues. Like, there's going to be no society that's going to get rid of sensory issues, is there? And sensory issues can be very disabling. And also, of course, sensory issues vary tremendously among autistic people. Some autistic people are very hypersensitive. Some autistic people are undersensitive. Some are a mixture of all of those, depending on the senses. So... As a type of society that might benefit one autistic person, like as, as an ideal society for me will be one that has no noise, other than noise that I create. <laughs> I'm fine with noise I create. Um, I'm talking about, you know, noises that I'm, I'm annoying control of that make me very stressed. Um, which obviously isn't practical and no society is going to be like that, let's face it. Um, other than natural sounds. I like natural sounds, you know, like bird song and all those things. I can't stand unnatural construction and all of that and people and uh, just shut up you know um but reality no society is going to have no human noise i mean just it's not happening is it um but again other autistic people there are other autistic people who really seek out loud noise and um positively enjoy loud noise so how is that going to work <laughs> yeah Okay, another comment now. So now we're going to move over to the part 15, uh, comments now for part 15 of the videos for Empire of Normality. So one of you says, I've been restrained, but that doesn't mean that all of psychiatry is bad. I'm glad to be born now with medicine for my bipolar disorder than in the past. And another one of you says, I completely agree that, that they are actually reinforcing the idea that only those who contribute to the public well-being are worthy by their insistence that neurodiversity is essential to the public well-being. And to me, it is yet again another indication that at the heart of much of the neurodiversity movement paradigm is an ingrained sense that disability and impairment are bad. Their argument is also flawed from a biological angle because neurodiversity doesn't really compare to biodiversity. Besides, biodiversity not, is not always beneficial, invasive species for example. Is this not just an example of a naturalistic fallacy that everything natural is good? I don't think any theory of disability can reflect reality if it doesn't take into account the fact that we are biological entities, animals, and that we are a social species. And we have to challenge stigma by removing value judgments from impairment, not by denying reality. Okay, and another comment now. I think at some levels of neurodiversity are probably good for society, but using it to justify our existence and denying the impairment of most autistic people is taking it too far. The video is right to say that it is heading towards a different type of eugenics. Autism might have given me gifts, but then it made me too disabled to use those gifts. Yeah, that's an interesting point. So, thanks for sharing. Right, another comment now. One of the most positive developments in society was the move towards a human rights understanding that people had intrinsic worth, not simply instrumental worth. Like you pointed out, like you pointed out, there is no need to justify why we should support people. The very act of offering a utilitarian justification undermines our intrinsic worth. If someone said we should support and give black and give black people equal 
rights in our society because by doing so they benefit our country. I think most people would see this, would see the inherent racism in that. We need to stop instrumentalising people altogether and value individuals for who they are and support people based on their needs and not based on any calculation of how that of how that support might enable them to contribute to the wider society, which a strengths model wrongly does, which, as you correctly pointed out, is itself a Galtonian way of looking at things. So, yes, thank you for drawing attention to the human rights legislations, um, which obviously came out of the, um, the last World War. Um, very much came out of that. Um, the need to see people as having inherent intrinsic worth um, and that their worth is um, can't, is not um, conditioned is, is unconditional unconditional worth irrespective of where they live their disability uh, their ethnicity their sexual orientation anything else that people have intrinsic worth as human beings and that no one should no one's value should be um, predicated on any um, any action they take you know what job they do how productive they are that is inherent to them inalienable I think's the word inalienable very important and as soon as we um, instrumentalize someone's worth so you're only worthy if you produce if you have a job if you have something to sell as soon as we do that we're opening up a very very dangerous road because that's the path the Nazis took, and that's what ultimately, you know, reducing people to economic units. I mean, Nazi school children were actually given the task of um, working out how much disabled people cost society through economics. Um, so yeah, it's a very dangerous line of reasoning. Thanks for that. Right, another comment now. Most of the USA believes you need to justify your existence and it's hard not to internalise it. It did cause me to be more suicidal. It is a Puritan work ethic. The USA is partially founded on these beliefs. Yes, thanks for sharing. I think um, Britain is too, to some extent. Um... But obviously because the USA is a, is a um, you know, was very much founded on the Puritan work ethic, like the founding fathers, very much, you know, it has its, its kind, of, kind of its origins in that mindset. Um, I think obviously it's even stronger in America, that line of reasoning. But there's a lot of it in, in Britain as well. Um, yeah, we need to try and get away away from that mindset, that instrumental reasoning, which I think can definitely increase people's kind of sense of well, it can affect it can negatively affect self esteem. It's, it's, it's a kind of doing mentality as opposed to a being mentality, which is has a very is very responsible for a lot of stress. This need to be constantly busy, doing things, constantly active, constantly acquiring, grabbing, whatever. I think it's very much deeply ingrained in all of us to some extent, um, because it's. The school system kind of drills us in that way of thinking, that sort of doing mentality. I mean, just sitting, doing nothing can be very difficult for people, just doing nothing. So people are like, oh, I need to be doing something. 
I should be being productive, I'm just wasting time. I mean, I have that as well, you know, I think we all have it, it's kind of drilled into us from a young age. It's not a very healthy mindset, that's why a lot of people go to like Buddhist retreats and places, to <laughs> mindfulness retreats to try and kind of enter a more being mindset where it's okay just to be, like you don't have to constantly be doing stuff all the time. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to be coming back to these videos because there are some more comments that I need to go through. So, thank you for watching.